All right, guys, so I want to explain a little bit what, about what I'm doing. So this is that cowling I spent so much time working on uh, repairing. And really the reason I bought that wreck kit fox a while back was to get this cowling. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. So a um, friend of mine gave me this other cowling that was off of a Model 5. And back in the early Model 5s, the Rotex cowling was much shorter. The uh, engine mount was tighter to the wall. And since in the Model 7, they've actually moved the whole engine forward four inches. And that's to counteract for putting more baggage in the Model 7s than they did in the 5. So this is the short Rotax cowl, smooth cowl, for a Model 5. Um, it's two-piece, and it usually comes all the way back. Um, you can see the Model 7 boot cowls underneath it. So the, the window lip comes all the way back, and that's usually where it sits. So... It's too short by about three inches for what I'm doing. Where it is right now centers the, the center of weight of the engine in the same location as the current Model 7 does with the Rotax engine. So for weight and balance purposes, I like the where the engine's position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Model 7 boot cow and I'm going to fit this Model 5 short Rotax cow to it. So I'm going to cut this cow and fit it to the back one. Now by moving it back far enough that I don't need a prop extension, I've got some clearance issues with the water pump, which is right here. And then the way I situated the radiator, it sits kind of half in, half out. I cut this channel out down here, and it's going to tuck up underneath, creating good airflow into the radiator. But I'm also going to bow it out and get the clearance I need over here for the water pump. So you can see this kind of this curved line here. You'll see something similar to that here, and then it will kind of fade out and go into the uh, radiator. So I think overall when I'm done, there'll be a nice transition there. It'll look cool. Um, it won't be super blocky. What I didn't want it was like a big flat front end, you know, some ugly modified cowling. So... What I'm doing right now is I'm cutting out the pieces to get the cowling to fit where I need it to go. Then I have to figure out how the best way to transcribe where the boot cowl lines up with the, the rest of the cowling so I can cut that line. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, the other thing that I want to modify is the spinner on this. It's like about a 10 inch spinner. It's actually smaller than the shape for the model 7 sorry i'm jumping around here but you can see on the model 7 one you're looking at about an 11 inch spinner the round portion of this cow was too large for the shape of the spinner i'm going to have and this cowling it was too narrow so i've taped off how i would reshape the top of this in order for it to come out and line up perfectly with the spinner. Now you guys are thinking, man, that's a lot of work to be doing to this cowl filling and getting the structural integrity back. This is true. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit this cowl up and I'm gonna bondo it so it's all, or super fill it, whatever, so it's super smooth and one solid piece of smooth fiberglass. And then I'm gonna lay up carbon fiber over it and, and do the whole cowling on the outside of it in carbon fiber. I'll be off the thickness of the fiberglass I have now. I think the only place it's really gonna be an issue is gonna be right up around the windshield. And uh, if that's the case, I can just uh, wait till I do the wait till I do that in order to mount the windshield, because there is enough flexibility with that windshield to make up the difference of the thickness of the fiberglass. So that's the plan right now. I wasn't really wanting to get into the cowling just yet, but when I went to start mounting the windshield, uh, it required the boot cowl be mounted. So I mounted the boot cowl up and then it really got me thinking, which cowl am I gonna use? And the seven is the backup option. So I'm gonna cut the crap out of this one and try to make it fit. And if I like the way it fits, then I'll go with this one. The reason I'm starting with this one is because I just love the profile of the top piece a lot better 
than the 7. I know the 7, they dropped it off quite a bit on the side. And I think it was intentional in order to get better visibility. But it also is much narrower in the front. And I just really, I've always liked this cowling. Um, I like the size of the openings and the shape of them. I, I just think it looks uh, so much nicer than these kind of weird shaped opening and kind of a, I don't know, it's just a, a completely different look on the front end of it. And I prefer this one. So I basically fit up the front two pieces to the back boot cowl and taped it in place. And now I'm gonna transfer that line across here. And that's not the line I'm gonna cut it at because that needs to overlap the width of the step on the boot cowl. So I'm gonna mark that line and then I have to transfer the width of that step over and that will be the line that I'm gonna cut. I um, also made some other reliefs to the cowling for where it's gonna interfere with the uh, engine. Had to remove some of the side pieces. Uh, the backing plates for the Zeus fasteners and then I take the vents out because they were pushing up against the side. So in order to get it placed the way I did here, I had to cut those out. But all that part of the cowling is going to be removed anyways. All right, <clears throat> so that's basically the way it's going to work out. Got some trimming to do to get that to sit flush on the cut I made, but actually overall it came out pretty good. Um, couple things that are going to need to be done so again this is just the general fit um, you can see how it has a little bit of warp here so I have to get that to sit down properly which will extend it on this end so some trimming will need to be done but you can see this body line I think you can see it here where it comes down there's a bump right here well the boot cow doesn't have that so I will have to carry that bump line that all the way back and then kind of fade it out into the boot the boot cowl. So there'll be some body work that needs to be done there to get that to fit that line. It'll actually look pretty cool because it'll come right into the boot cowl, look real, really like it was meant to be there. The other thing that's gonna need to be done is this spinner. I'm gonna need to fill this into the prop and then I'll probably do the same thing here where the overhang of the spinner over this opening. So this opening will get smaller as well. Um, and then I have to deal with this, this water pump clearance right here. So I cut this line. I'm probably gonna need to take it out a little bit further, probably the outside of this tape. And then I'll do a, a rounded edge, kind of like this here. It'll kind of look like that. I'm actually pretty excited that it's going to work. There's one other spot that's going to require a bit of work, and that's the old scoop for the windshield on the uh, the cowling that was there before. I'm going to have to cut that out until it gets flat, and then that portion from the boot cowl to where I cut out is going to need to be filled in as well. I've gone ahead and riveted them together, and I'm going to come over this with Bondo, smooth these edges. There's this bump that carries through, so that's what I've been working on is getting everything secured and I'm going to carry that that uh, body line into the boot cowl. Um, had to trim because the shape of the top was a little bit different. I had to kind of squash it down and then it moved this seam down, so I had to trim that seam on both side, sides. So I've got that as a pretty good line now. We're on this side. Same thing, I had to trim this body line all the way across. I'm gonna come down and put some Cuecos in to hold that tight, and then I'll start shaping this, this fade out of this body line right here. I had this thing sitting down here, and I don't know if you saw in the previous clips where I had cut the tunnel here, and uh, did a real careful job of not taking it all the way up to this opening. And I stepped off the ladder and caught one of these cords, and I stepped on it right here and broke the whole cowling out. So now I have to fix all that. So nothing like adding more work to yourself. So what came in from aircraft spruce, it's my carbon. So it's all here, ready to go. We're excited to kind of get to work with this stuff and see how difficult it is. All right guys, so I'm making up some expanding foam. Um, I'm gonna do 
I really don't have any experience with this at all. So I'm going to start with a 300 mil mix. I don't know if that's too much. I don't know if that's not enough. Um, we'll find out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it down into this little plastic area that I've created. And it's going to expand, probably expand to the point where it pops this plastic off. Maybe, maybe not. But the engine's all plastic wrapped and I'm just going to fill that area with foam so I can shape it to get the, the shape I need in order to get around the uh, water pump. And that'll, that'll form the front part of the cow. I'm gonna do a similar thing underneath here to go back to the radiator. It's really difficult though, because I'm working upside down really. This would be a lot easier if I could flip it over and shape it the other way. But to get it to match everything, I need to do it on the aircraft. All right, a little progress update. Uh, I didn't show making the the dam I used on the top. Let me just kind of reenact that real quick for you. So I put this piece of tag board on the front shaped to the, the um, propeller spinner backing plate. And then I just taped down some of this foam just to create a dam left and right side. Poured the foam in, it expanded way over. I used a little bit too much there. But it cuts so easily. I've got one of these, uh, I don't even know what this is really is, a hand saw blade. Because there's no handle on the other end, it's, that's a good tool to use to cut it. And then I've got 60 grit sandpaper for the initial shaping. I was able to get the shape real nice to the spinner. Matter of fact, I can hold up the backing plate on there. And you can see it fits up real nice. And I'm trying to match it perfectly with the backing plate because the carbon layers built up should match the carbon layer of the spinner and then it should come out even. So it should be pretty dang nice matching the shape. And then the other thing I wanna do is fill in around this edge as well. So I'll have to do that, which will close up that opening a little bit, but keep that shape going so it doesn't have a weird overhang right there. Uh, I was a little short on the foam on this side, so I went ahead and did a second pour. Take this tape off now. It does stick to the masking tape, but it did not stick to the plastic, so it actually worked out pretty good. So I'm going to start shaping that, and the goal there is to take this body line right here and carry it up so that that lip extends a little bit further down. And then at the transition point right here, we're going to go inside and do that reverse lip right there to carry the airflow to the radiator. I don't know why we say we. It's just me. But <laughs> anyway, so the uh, shaping of the cowlings come along pretty good. So far, I'm pretty happy with how easy this expandable foam is to shape. And once we get that all done, we'll start putting uh, body filler on there. You can see I've already started the body filler here. The other place I have to fill in is the gap I had between the Model 5 cow and the Model 7 cow. The windshield shield scoop started up right here, so they cut that out. So I still need to fill that in as well. And then I also glued down, I took the hinge out of the hatch here, glued it down, but it's got some raised edges. So that's going to require quite a bit of body work to get rid of that line.
All right, so a little update. <clears throat> Did my basic shaping and a couple spots I wanted to build up. I decided to do is carry this line right here all the way up. So that's going to be uh, what's going to give me the extra area, extra depth for the um, water pump clearance. And actually, I hit the water pump screw right there, so I may have to build that up a little bit with the bondo. But I'm gonna carry that in here. It's really hard to get this foam to stick upside down, so I just kind of tapped it on there. Oh, see how that works. Then I poured it down the inside here. Made a mess, but created a, a shape out of tape here and got it to fill in. It didn't do a very good job right in here, so I'll have to try again right there. But that's gonna form the sides of the scoop down to the radiator. So we'll smooth this out here so it's flush, bring it right on back, and then kind of shape these edges so they curl in. But the shaping's coming along. I got the, the top piece pretty close to being done. I glued this uh, hatch in and then sanded it flush. I'm gonna go ahead and bondo that out and smooth it so that's done. And then I gotta fill this area in here where it's cut. And then uh, you're ready to shape that piece. So. All right, guys, so I'm going to give you a quick update of what's going on with the cowling. I made a lot of progress today, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I've been out here since uh, 8. It's now 5 p.m. I'm working hard on it, but uh, I was able to get the, the shape that I need to clear the water pump, which is right here, and the scoop for the radiator all shaped in. Um, using that expanding foam to start a base and then work it up with Bondo on top. Um, it worked pretty good. Uh, that expanding foam is, is really cool. Uh, the inside of this cowling is a mess. It's just jammed full of foam everywhere. Um, but what, what my plan was here was to make this look as, not factory because it's not a factory cow, but as, as a natural looking cow as possible. And so what I did was I carried the body line that was already here with this, this lower bump. It used to come all the way across and then kind of faded out right about here. So this, this line disappeared right about here. So I carried that curvature clear up to the opening in front of the gearbox. And by doing that, I was able to extend it out to the thickness that I needed and not really change the look of the cow very much. So this body line is now all the way up to the opening. And it worked out pretty good. And then when I came, when I when I brought it down to where it used to terminate, I then took the the piece I cut and folded it up under the radiator. And then I poured that foam down inside to get a, a piece of foam back in here. And then uh, went ahead and started shaping it to get this tunnel to the radiator. The only thing that's a little weird is the radiator is offset to the left. As we're looking at it, it's actually the right side of the aircraft. And that's because the exhaust is right here. And so the one thing I still might do is bring this section here down even with the bottom of the radiator. And, and I may actually connect it out all the way out on the cowling. I haven't decided yet, but the, the exhaust outlet is right here. So I want to give a little bit more room for the exhaust so I don't have any heat issues. So I'm still working on that a little bit. Um, but that's the shape I was able to accomplish today. There's a little bit of spot right here that I need to fill in because it's not quite the right line. I'm almost done with the first gallon of Bondo. That's how much this, you know, I'm mixing it up at about 100 grams at a time. I don't know why that works into a gallon, but anyway, um, just about out. So I went down to town and got another one just so I don't run out of the Bondo. So. That's progress for today. I think it made pretty good progress. I've got uh, three more days at this, and it'd be great if I could get to the, the carbon layup, but I don't know that I will. Hello. I read glass to strip in here to close that gap from here to here. It's still kind of loose right there. It didn't bond up well, but uh, again, this is just for the mold purposes, so this will all be bonded and smooth and then ease that transition into the boot cowl from the 7. Now you can see I went ahead and riveted all these three pieces together. So it is one solid piece now. 
And that was, I was kind of waiting to do that fill piece to, to do that, because once I do that, the whole thing has to come off as one piece. So <clears throat> what I can do now is carry the body lines into the boot cowl, and then go ahead and cover up the seams with Bondo, and then fix this front piece. You can see where the tape is here. This completes the circle on the, uh, on the spinner. So I gotta figure out how to fill that in. So I'm still coming up with an idea in my head about how to do that. All right guys, so it looks like a mess right now, but I'm actually getting real close to being done shaping the cowling. So let me just kind of go back and, and kind of explain what I did here. So I took the boot cowl from a Model 7 cowling, the front cowl from a short cowl, uh, short smooth cowl for the Rotax Model 5. That was kind of a shorter one before they extended it out four inches. Um, then I cut that front piece to match the boot cowl Gave me the length I needed so I didn't need a spacer on the prop flange and the proper length for where the engine's positioned. I really like the length of it. I love the look of this front cowl. It's got really nice lines. I'm sorry about the fact that there's not very much light in here. We do have a power outage again in California. But there's two body lines that kind of come down like this. And then this one disappears here. I carried the other one into the boot cowl. So that's all going to carry on so they, they do look like they match. All the seams have been uh, sanded flush. So I've riveted all these together underneath the, you, this, uh, these bondo patches or the rivets. So it's all one piece right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish sand it down to probably 800 grit. The whole thing, get it real smooth, and then wax the crap out of it. And then go ahead and wrap the carbon on the outside. I will be off the thickness of this cowling at the points where it mounts, but that's also an area where it's flexible. So if I'm off a 16th right here, you'll be able to make that up just by flexing the cowl and it's not gonna, you won't be able to notice it. The only difference would be the thickness right here at the windshield. And again, the windshield's not mounted yet. You can lift the front of the windshield and it will fit just fine. Um, the only other place I'm real concerned about is right on the front, on the spacing between the front edge of it and the prop flange. So um, I'm being careful with that. What I'll probably do is maybe one or two layers, probably two layers here on the front. And then once it's pulled off, I'll, I'll do some additional layers on the inside of the cowling to make this really strong, maybe like additional three or four layers. Um, this tends to be where you have your cracks show up around the openings. So I'm really gonna beef that up, but I don't need to beef it up on the outside. I can beef it up on the inside. And uh, really the only thing left to do is I got to carry where I made the spinner larger, the spinner roundness of the cowl to match the spinner. Um, it was too small on this cowling and it's actually too big on the Model 7 cowling. So um, I made this to the 10 inch spinner, but I don't want it to not carry the line through this opening. So I'm going to fill this here and shape that and get that line with the, to match the, uh, the, the spinner. So that's what I'm going to do next, and once that's done, then it's all just finished sanding, and I'll go ahead and pull it off, remove the radiator. I'm glad I hadn't put the fluid in it yet, but I'm going to remove the radiator and get ready to lay it up. I'll put it back on and actually lay it up on here. What I'm going to have to do, though, is rivet into the fuselage in a couple places to hold this in place, and I will use aluminum rivets that, that can then be drilled back out again. So... That's really the only, only way I'm going to be able to hold it in position the way I need to. And then that will allow me to pull the carbon um, off the mold because the mold will be held steady to the fuselage. I can just grab it, hopefully pull it right off. We'll see how that comes out. That's the plan. So um, 
all week working on this, kind of trading off between this and the airbox. Um, I'm not going to show the airbox project because it didn't turn out very well. Uh, <laughs> kind of a fail. I made a mold and the mold stuck to the plug that I made for chemical reasons. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it was, wasn't very salvageable. I'm still trying to salvage the mold to make another plug so I can basically start over. But uh, I ran around town and got supplies to do that, and it, they weren't compatible. So I used the wrong kind of gel coat, and it bonded with the plug. And it was a fail. It was a bad one because I spent so much time on it. But um, I learned that you should get the right chemicals, just like you should always get the right tools. You should get the right compatible parts so that you can um, be successful. So um, that being said, I actually was a little concerned about laying the carbon directly up on the Bondo. Um, so I asked some questions about that. Thanks, Mike Patey. Um, we're going to go ahead and just wax the crap out of it. I'll probably get some of that PVA release agent to go on top of that. And um, the only other way we could do it is the way uh, Mike did it with the, when he copied the turbulence cowling for Draco was he taped it. And I could tape it off. I'm just afraid I'll lose some of the detail in the body lines if I layer it up with tape. And then I'm adding that thickness, and I'm already trying to keep the thickness difference to a minimum. So we're going to just sand it as smooth as you can, wax it, buff it, wax it, buff it five, six times, and get it where we can uh, get it to release. So I'm going to get back at it.